So I really do believe that all our hotels have the best location that we can have. I stayed at the Hotel Plaza Athenae, as you know, I was lucky enough. And there were some incredible cars, luxury cars out the front. There was a blue Ferrari and there was a blue Ducati that I believe was worth eight and a half million euro. And of course, one of your big personal achievements was putting Alan Ducasse at the head of food and beverage, which was about 20 years ago, right? Hello, my name is Renee Leith Manos. Welcome to this podcast. Where to from here? Featuring conversations about luxury travel and how it's changing in every pocket of the globe. Mr. Francois Delahaye, welcome to the program. Your hotels are some of my favourite hotels in the world. You know this. So it is just a great honour to be speaking with you. I've just been in Paris and I believe that June 2022 was one of the most successful months ever on record. Now, tell us about that. Well, first of all, after two years of silence and isolation, I have to say that from May, June, July, and even August and September is rocking, Paris did really wake up and we were so happy to see the, our friends back from Australia, from Brazil, from uh, America, North America, of course, uh, and from Europe. Of course, we're missing our Russian and our Chinese people. But other than that, we were so happy mainly to see the growth of North American because of the parity with the dollar. The parity with the dollar allowed them to pay 25% less that what they were paying before. And that was a great encouragement for them to come and to stay in Paris. Absolutely. I mean, there were so many Americans there and the buzz that they bring with them, I think it was, was absolutely fantastic. And I was there for some of August and there were quite a few guests. I stayed at the Hotel Plaza Athenae, as you know, I was lucky enough. And there were some incredible cars, luxury cars out the front. There was a blue Ferrari and there was a blue Ducati that I believe was worth eight and a half million euro. So can you talk us through that? Your guests come and bring their cars from the Middle East? Some uh, Middle Eastern uh, guests, the child of our guests, it's, uh, it's the young generation, they uh, enjoy to hang around Paris, mainly on the Champs-Élysées with uh, outstanding cars, which means uh, you saw some Ferrari, but we had some Bugatti, we have some Pagano. We had some incredible cars because there is a little of a competition. For example, when somebody is taking the Royal Suite or one of the Eiffel Suites where we are right now, a uh, guest wants to have their cars parked in front of the hotel. But it's not only at the, at the Plaza Athene, those. this is happening also at the Murray's, this is happening also at the Dorchester in front of the door, or at the Beverly Hills in California, where the guests are requesting to have their car uh, in front of the hotel. And how much do they have to pay as a guest to keep their car with you at the front? No, no, they don't pay. They don't pay anything no, for that. It's uh, when they take the royal suite, we put the car in front of the hotel when it's a nice car, that's all. No, there is no payment for that. There is no charge. Wow, but they've obviously paid a lot to bring it over in an aeroplane. I guess it goes in the cargo hold and then gets delivered to the front door of the hotel. I have no clue how did they reach the Europe, <laughs> but I think you're right. And I think they go in a container. Amazing. And look, Paris is such a special city, but especially for super, super luxury hotels, many of which, including the Dorchester properties, are known as palace hotels. Can you explain that concept and how it came to be in Paris? Well, first of all, uh, after two years of isolation, uh, our guests are really willing to come back and to take some big space and to have service. They have been in their uh, home, with some service, of course, and they want the same thing. So I think the differentiation and why the needs of Palace and the incredible hotel like the Dorchester Collection, it's the request of the guest who wants 
to get services. Those very uh, rich people who travel, that's exactly what they want. They want, first of yeah. all, to be recognized. They want to be uh, uh, acknowledged as, uh, as, as important people. And we are ready for that. And that's exactly the reason of the success of our hotels right now. But it's also the success of all the palaces in Paris because we are ready with our staff right now to welcome those uh, guests who are willing to leave. 100%. But no, this palace label, the branding calling the hotel's palace, how did that start in Paris? Where's the, so where's the it, story for this? The story of the palace started something like 15 years ago. It, there is a specificity in France where the classification and the rank of zero star, one star, two star, three star, four star, four-star deluxe was the maximum and it's run by the French government. So we have been and I have been acting on lobbying in order to get like every country in the world to have five-star. And uh, actually what happened, it's the government did follow me and started to put the five-star, but we and I faced the lobbying of the Accor Group who decided to push up all the ranking of their uh, hotels. For example, the Novotel and the Mercure, which used to be a free star and very good free star for ego purpose. They all wanted to be four star. The Sofitel, which is the high brand, they wanted to be five star, which wow. we, in uh, facing our owners, which are spending a lot of capital expenditure in all our properties. And that's not for us at Dorchester. This is for all the palaces in France. They are spending a lot of money in Courchevel, in uh, the south of France, in Biarritz, everywhere. They're spending a lot and they have the same uh, classification. So I really ask, and we were listened by the French government in order to uh, put a more than five star and they decided to put a label which is not a fifth a six star but which is a label where as soon as you reach the five star you can apply to become a palace with You're certain right. classification that can request and that's how it started about 15 years ago and do you do you have to be checked every year to make sure that you're still a palace hotel or once a palace always a palace absolutely every two years you need to reapply and to re to redo the competition and there is some uh, some check wow amazing and francois i have known you for a long time and you're one of the most passionate hoteliers that i've ever met what was it that got you into the industry in the first place to choose this as your career <laughs> that's a that's a very good question uh first of all i was not so good at school my uh, mother because sadly i lost my father when i was 13 so my mother was pulling her hair trying to do something out of me and uh, she uh punished me and what i mean by punish during the month of july and august where usually when you are at school you're going on, on vacation with my sisters and my brother. My mother said, now this time, no way. You're not going to have any vacation. You're going to work in the kitchen of a restaurant in Lille in the north of France. Right, mom. And, right, mom. and to, to me, that was, that was a, not a punishment because I loved it. I really enjoy for one thing. For the first time in my life, somebody told me, you know, kid, what you did that the eggs you just did the client say it's very good so for the first time in my life i think i was 16 i realized that i could do something with my hands and i loved it and uh, my mother realized it put it put me in a school in uh, in switzerland mm -hmm. where I, I i learned and then after i finished the, the course in switzerland my mother sent me in chester in the north of England, in order to make sure that I will not meet any French people, in order to learn the language. And I worked in an hotel, the Grosvenor Hotel in Chester. Uh, and then, because I have been very lucky in my life, strangely, the Duke of Westminster, who was uh, the owner of the hotel where I was working, had a butler. 
that butler had an heart attack. So somebody had to replace him on the spot. And I was the little Frenchman who became the butler for the Duke of Westminster. And what lucky enough- What a great enough, story. That's amazing. And, that is and, lucky. And, luck, and lucky, lucky enough, the daughter of the Duke of Westminster during my course in the castle married his daughter, Leonora, with the cousin of the queen, Lord Litchfield. And during the marriage, me as a little butler with my morning suits, I had to face the entire people which were on the official picture, which was the Queen Mam, Princess Margaret, Princess Anne, the Linley, where they're the, the, the two kids, and of course Queen Mam and the Queen. And when they finished the official picture, they came in a small room like this suite, and the first person who appeared during that, uh, that drink was the queen. And the queen as a Frenchman was facing me. And I remember it was, I knew her from the coins and the notes and the stamps and on newspaper, but she was facing me. And with my horrible French accents, I faced her and I said, mom, would you like a glass of champagne? And she smiled like a mother and she realized I was French and she said, Oh, avec un grand plaisir. Merci beaucoup. She speaks French better than I do. And I felt ashamed. <laughs> I was with my tray and she took a glass of champagne and everybody came in the room. And uh, that's my, my little story for the belated uh, the queen, which just passed away. But what a life you've had. What an incredible start. No wonder there was no way you weren't going into hospitality after that good luck and wonderful life experience at such a young age. Absolutely. Absolutely, and I really enjoyed to be the butler for the Duke, and it was a great experience with the Duchess to be trained because I had to. Even when you face the Queen, you need to you need to bend, you need you know you, you need to also call her like your mother, mum. So there is a, several things which the Duchess told me, and I'm very proud. I think I'm. Uh, I think I really am lucky. I have been lucky all my life. Yeah. Well, you were very lucky to get the job. It wasn't just luck, though at the Dorchester Collection, which of course was in 2004. And do you still consider that a turning point in your career? Yes, of course. Well, first of all, I was hired to become the general manager of the Plaza Athene, which, yes. uh, which we are now today. And in 2004 till 2006, we created with Christopher Cowdrey, the Dorchester Collection. And that, that, that's how it started with three hotels, which were the Dorchester, the Maurice, and the Beverly Hills, which we, re we, we included also with the three other hotels, which were the New York Palace, the Bel Air, and the Plaza Athene. We purchased the Principe di Savoy. We created Coa Park, 45 Park Lane. Uh, we purchased the Eden, and that's how that incredible uh, group started in 2006. Wow. And of course, one of your big personal achievements was putting Alan Ducasse at the head of food and beverage, which was about 20 years ago, right? Absolutely. That was in 2000. I, I was working with Alan Ducasse before, so he knew me. And I asked him to join uh, the Plaza Athene, where he was a great help for 22 years. And then I asked him also to help us in London, where he put the free star. And also we asked him to help us at the Maurice and uh, we passed company at the Plaza Athene, but we're still working with him at the Maurice and at the Dorchester in London. Okay. Okay. And you have a new chef. Tell, him, tell me about him, Jean Imbert. Is it, did I pronounce that right? So Jean Imbert is a young chef. He's uh, less than 40 years old. And uh, we wanted with Jean Imbert to do something totally different that with uh, Alain Ducasse. Alain Ducasse had, uh, first of all, a dining room and a cuisine which was very sophisticated and very elaborated, which was mainly serving fish, vegetables, and cereal. But sadly, the, uh, the attendance of that restaurant was not as good as we wanted from the hotel guest because when you, as a, as a guest, when you travel and you arrived in Japan, in Narita, the only thing you want is to have a classic, 
best Japanese experience. When you land in Paris and you want to have a classic, genuine, authentic French cuisine, you need to go to a bistro because yes. all the chefs became so, not shishi, but so detailed, so sophisticated that we are not having the same dishes like we used to have in the past with right. some flambé, with some cuts, some découpe. So the, the whole art de vivre à la française, which we are trying to look, was a little affected. And that's why with the change, the departure of Alain and the arrival of Jean, we decided to go full speed on the French art de vivre, which is the glass baccarat, the cutlery Christophe, the Bernardo plates, and of course the food with some very classic dishes uh, made by Jean Albert, which I have to say is after one year, a real success. 100% agree, I agree. And tell me if food is one of the secrets to running you know, some of the best hotels in the world, Give us some other insider secrets. What else are your guests looking for, Francois? So first of all, the hotels want to have the best location. I think the most important is to have hotels which are surrounded by the best boutiques, uh, surrounded by the place to be. I think uh, more and more, and I, I think it's uh, Cesar Ritz who was saying that the, the three most important things for an hotel, it's location, location, location. And I think that's the most important. Uh, it's the location of the hotel. And that's why to have the location at the Dorchester collection that we have, the Plaza Athenee Avenue Montaigne, uh, the Murray's, which is next to the Place Vendôme, and it's in front of the Tuileries Garden next to the, uh, the Louvre. This is the best location we have uh, in front of Park Lane, with the Dorchester N45 Park Lane. Uh, we have the, uh, in the middle of uh, Bel Air and Beverly Hills, we have the two iconic properties. So I really do believe that all our hotels have the best location that we can have. And I think that's what the clients sleep needs the most. Then you have the service. And to have, for example, uh, 200 rooms at the Plaza Atene and 600 employees, this is giving you the level of service that we can give. And this is the average that we are having in all our properties. And I think that's what the guests are wanted. I think that was your question. What are yeah. they looking? So, yeah, yeah. And also, they want, they want also the, uh, all our hotels to be the place to be. Yeah. Wherever you are, you, you are in Milano, you are in Rome, all our hotels are having the, 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 the rich and famous who stay there. But not only that, they have the people who count on economy, count on politics, who stay yeah. there. And I think that's yes. very important. Can you share any celebrity stories um, that you've experienced in any of your hotels during your career? Uh, actually, yes, I have a story, but it's not, a, it's not reflecting very good on me, I have to say. <laughs> I uh, doubt that. <laughs> Oh, yes, you see, uh, it's appalling, I have to say. One day, I was flying from Asia to Los Angeles, and I arrived very early in the morning, like five o'clock in the morning. So by the time I reached the Beverly Hills, uh, I just went to take a quick shower, and I had the breakfast in the coffee fountain that we are having, which is a little like a diner's. And it's a counter where there is 20 seats, fixed seats, in front of the kitchen where you have a lady which is preparing you the freshest orange juice she's preparing you your omelets and your croissant and you know it's right in front of you and the experience is amazing so i arrived in that place at seven sharp in the morning the place was empty without one guest one guest was sitting there finishing his breakfast so i sat down free seat next to him and he turned to me because we were just lonely. And he said, hello, how are you? And, you know, as a French person, I said, oh, hello, I'm French. I arrived, I'm going tonight to Paris, arriving from Beijing in China on my way. And I talked quite openly with him. And then the guy finished his, uh, his omelette and uh, left. And I was just by myself with the, 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 the very nice uh, waitress. And I said, you need to help me. Uh, who is this guy? His face is familiar. 
I cannot recall if it's a travel agent or if it's uh, uh, somebody working for the hotel, but his face is familiar, help me. And she looked at me and said, Mr. Delay, come on, this is Tom Cruise. <laughs> You're joking. So is, Didn't you recognize so him by the teeth? <laughs> this is a true story and I feel quite embarrassed about it. I have sorry. Oh. When you travel, I mean, you know, the Dorchester collection are just such luxurious properties. Do you find it hard to travel? I mean, do you always travel in luxury? Where, where do you like to go? Oh, no. Uh, usually I love to spend my vacation with my grandkids because I'm a grandfather now, with my family, my daughter, my son. That's my perfect vacation. Now that I'm aging a little more, uh, I love to go to small island in Greece, small island in uh, Spain, Minorca, Mallorca, Ibiza. So I, I love those little islands. I like to be close to the sea. I think water is great. And the more I age, I like sun and sea. That's, uh, yeah. that's what I'm looking for. I would love to speak with you all day, Francois. But before we go, can you answer the question that I ask everyone? Where to from here for you? Well, uh, we have a, a big meeting with my employee just after that where I need to thank them because they have been working so hard. So I have a general assembly with all the employees uh, at three o'clock this afternoon. And I have the, the 600 employees in front of me in order to thank them for the beautiful uh, efforts that they did uh, for um, the month of May in Paris, where we have been rocking. Uh, I have also a meeting at the Maurice with the general manager, Frank Altan, uh, later during the day. Uh, and I am preparing also uh, um, what we call it the budget season for our hotel. So working on the budgets and giving some objective after such a, an incredible year, that's gonna be a challenging year. So this is gonna be my day today. Fantastic. Well, it's just wonderful to see you as it always is and to hear you know, everything about your life. And I must say, your mother sounded wonderful. What a great oh, mother. To push you to Thank England, you. to push you to work in your holidays. I have a son and I'm gonna take on board what you've told me because I think it's uh, great life lessons and great values. You're very lucky. Absolutely. I thank you a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Merci Francois. A bientôt. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't forget to subscribe here and follow us on Instagram and Facebook for regular travel updates. You can also hear our episodes on Spotify and Apple Podcasts.